Bailey and over the next four weeks we're going to be celebrating the Dartmoor Connections Festival, celebrating everything that is special about Dartmoor, its wildlife and its history. Uh, so today uh, we're going to be focusing in on the Bronze Age and we're going to be exploring uh, what some of the antiquarians did in the past. Uh, today we're looking at the Hameldown Dagger and we're going to try and make our own model of the Hameldown Dagger. So we've got things uh, lined up over the next four weeks which are going to be for, for everyone, whatever your interest. So there'll be talks, there are going to be crafty workshops like the one today, uh, there are going to be videos online, and there are going to be all kinds of things. Lots of suggestions about places you might get out and explore. So hopefully uh, you'll uh, have a fantastic time, whatever you uh, take from this festival. Uh, as I say, today we are going to make the Hameldown Dagger. Uh, out of just junk and things that you would probably normally throw away. Uh, so that's our plan today. So if you're going to join in with us, then you are going to need uh, to download this uh, template here. Uh, so just print that out if you've not already printed it out. And then we're going to give it a go. Uh, I suppose I ought to tell you a little bit about the dagger first of all. So the dagger was discovered in 1872 by a Victorian uh, antiquarian, sort of the early uh, archaeologists. And he had special permission to go on to the Duke of Somerset's land and uh, explore some of the, the burial mounds that are up there on Hameldown. And he was uh, excavating one called Two Barrows. And as he got into this, he found a bit of the blade and he found the, uh, the amber pommel, which is this bit here. Of the end of the handle uh, and it's a really significant find because with the amber the amber suggests that our ancestors were trading uh, with the Baltic uh, countries uh, because we don't have it here in this country it was also incredibly worked with fine gold pins as well I've got some pictures of it here on my tablet so I can maybe show you uh, those I just so this is so this picture here, uh, if I just get that so it doesn't glare, uh, this picture is a picture of the dagger, uh, of a replica of the dagger. Uh, sadly, uh, the dagger uh, was stored in Plymouth and during the uh, Second World War, the building it was in was bombed and destroyed and the uh, dagger was lost uh, with it as well. Uh, so this is a replica based on drawings uh, that were made at the time. And when the visitor centres reopen, uh, you'll be able to go and see this replica up at Prince Town uh, and also at Postbridge as well. So there's something uh, to keep an eye out for. Uh, you can also see here, um, this is sort of some of the illustrations from the original archaeologist from Spence Bates himself. And this bit here, this is the bit of the blade that was discovered. Uh, and that's really exciting. You can see there's sort of these grooved patterns along it there. So I've got a light that shines down on me here and it just catches the light. So if I, there, that's better. You can see, see that there. Uh, and what else? Have I got another picture as well? I think so, yes. So this picture here, uh, this was taken from the transactions of the Devonshire Association. They set up a special committee called the Dartmoor Exploration Committee and they went out and explored lots of Dartmoor and really helped to shape our understanding of what we know today with Dartmoor's archaeology. And these drawings here show the dagger blade itself and they show the amber pommel that was discovered. And you probably can't see uh, from here but I can share these pictures online I think. You might just be able to see there's sort of a cross pattern on there and that cross pattern is made out of little gold pins. So an incredible find really. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to try and make our dagger. So I think uh, we've got, uh, I've got sort of assisted by uh, Savannah sort of uh, behind the scenes. She's posted a link to the, uh, to where you could find out about the template for the dagger. So if you are ready, you want to get involved, let's, let's go, let's try and make this dagger. Okay, so I've already cut out some bits of card just to sort of uh, the shape of the, uh, the template. 
here. So I'm going to start those. I've been collecting cereal packets and all kinds of stuff in order to sort of get ready for this uh, because I was trying to sort of think about how we might make this. If we were, if this is a normal year, then we'd be sort of running this event as a face-to-face -face workshop, and it'd be lovely to see you all. But sadly, things are what they are, and we sort of have to be safe and uh, take care of each other. So we're doing this all online this year. So I thought, well, we're going to have to try and find materials that we have all got at home that we could easily use. So if we can make these things out of recycled materials, here we go. So you should find lots of cards, shouldn't you, in your recycling box, I think, that you could probably use. Uh, we've been getting quite a lot of deliveries, so we've got some delivery boxes and things like that, so they could be used as well. And this really is pretty much what they, what our ancestors would be sort of making. Obviously, they're not going to use it out of cardboard and scissors, but they are making a, a blade. They're beating and forging a blade out of, out of bronze. Uh, and this is probably, we reckon this, like this dagger was from about three and a half thousand years ago, somewhere around there. So this is a, a, an ancient uh, find, isn't it? So I've got here, just trying to make sure, in the excitement of doing this, that you can actually see what I'm doing as well. <laughs> Otherwise, you've just got me chatting away. And you can't really see anything. So originally I was thinking that we'd be able to do this online together and I'd be able to see you all sort of working as well. But in the end we felt this was probably the best way to do this uh, over Facebook because we know we've got lots of people who follow us on Facebook. Um, and you can always join us later. This film will be archived once we are... Uh, once we finish today. So you'll be able to come back and have a go later if you've not got the materials to hand right now. Uh, don't worry about that. And we'll also put a version of this on YouTube as well. Excellent. So we should have two pieces of our dagger blade here. And that's because if we just use one piece, it's a bit, a bit wobbly, isn't it? It's not going to really work. So we need to try and reinforce this here. So I found uh, some card here out of a breadstick box. So that's useful, isn't it? Long and thin. And I've just folded it over and rolled it around. And this is where I need some sellotape. Let's see if I can find my sellotape on the desk. Here. So I've got this piece of card here. And I'll just get some sellotape. Take this up. Now this is our reinforcing piece here. So once it's required to make, the, and also to give the dagger a little bit of shape as well. So obviously it's not a, just a two-dimensional thing. It's must have been very exciting to be in spent fate, to be excavating that cairn, and to suddenly come across this find. Um, I think a lot of the techniques he used have been used subsequently by archaeologists. He was quite meticulous about how he was doing things. Because uh, you sometimes think that some of these uh, Victorian archaeologists were perhaps a little bit like Indiana Jones and were sort of a bit gung ho, but I think he was quite meticulous. Uh, and I'm going to use a, a barbecue skewer here uh, to sort of like to put inside this bit of cardboard. Uh, obviously it's got a massive sharp spike on the end of it, so I'm going to cut the end off. It's just fired somewhere across the room. <laughs> Thank you, Visit Dartmoor. Nice to see that you're watching us here. Yes, I think I definitely feel like a Blue Peter presenter. Uh, so now we've got a solidy bit here. 
this is going to reinforce our dagger and I folded the cardboard over at the end and that was to stop the bit of spike coming through as well. So I'm going to put that down the middle of our dagger and this is where I get to be proper blue Peter because I can say well um, you can use any glue to stick this together but on this occasion I'm using double sided sticky tape. This is one of those things as a child in the dim and distant past I was always incredibly jealous of whenever they did that on Blue Peter. They'd always say oh yeah you could use some double sided sticky tape. Of course we never had any and I would try to make things uh, using glue and they would always fall apart. So I've stuck stuck my uh, reinforcing bit on there put it on like that. That's good. And I'm going to do a similar thing now. Let's put another piece. There we are. Sorry, I apologise. I've just I've got a not such a big working space in front of the camera here, in order to, so you can see me, so you can see the worktop. There we go. So I'm putting some more double-sided tape on there. I so say if you've not got double-sided tape, don't worry. Pritt stick would be fine, or a bit of PVA glue. Or even just some sellotape, sellotape it together. Right. Just allows me to be a little bit speedier as we're doing this. Right, now I'm going to put my second piece on top, sandwich it together like that. And you might find the edges don't quite join up properly, they're sort of a little bit all over the place, but don't worry about that, it's not too big a problem. And this is where we're going to use some sellotape here just to uh, join the edges together. So I'm going to put a little bit of sellotape on the edge there, that's good. Try not to lose the end of the sellotape, it's always a nightmare, isn't it, when you lose the end? That. So over the next four weeks, we've got all kinds of things going on. We've got, we've got history talks, we've got wildlife talks, uh, we've got lots of workshops as well. So uh, we're going to be doing a workshop on Wednesday uh, to make some Bronze Age jewellery. So if this, if this is all about the 1872 archaeological uh, investigation, then the thing on Wednesday it's going to be all about the uh, investigation in 2011, so sort of right up to date. Uh, it'll be interesting to sort of compare how the different uh, archaeological techniques have taken place over the time. So now we have our dagger. It's quite sturdy and it's got sort of like that sort of shape to it, that cross-sectional shape, uh, which you would have if you'd forged this out of bronze. Now if you remember on the picture that I showed you, let's see, let's just put that down. So on the picture that I showed you here, if I can just there we go. Then can you see there are a couple of lines running up the length of the blade? These are kind of decorative features here. Uh, hopefully they're nothing too more macabre than that. Uh, so I thought, how do I recreate those? And well, I thought actually what you can do is we could use uh, some string on this to sort of get those sort of ridged edges. So again, we're going to use a bit of double sided sticky tape. Uh, again, you could use a bit of crit stick or something like that. I'm going to put that down there, down that side. And put another piece down the other side. Was the problem, isn't it? Trying to find the ends on these things in, in a rush. Okay. Let's have a look. So now, basically, I've got some lots of sticky all over the dagger blade there, and what we need to do is decorate that. And so I've got some string here. I hold that back there. I'm just going to run this string parallel to the edge of the blade till I get down to the point. I'm going to turn back on myself. 
and then come back up this way. So you end up with something that looks a bit like that. And do that a second time. So I've got that going on. So I just need to do that again on this other side. So it's all in real time this. Normally with these videos, they kind of cut these bits out, don't they? If they get a bit too long and boring. I'm afraid you've got the whole thing here from start to finish. But uh, if you are joining in or you're sort of going to make this later, uh, then we'd love to see uh, what you uh, get up to, how you uh, achieve it. Uh, we've set up a hashtag, Dartmoor Connections. So if you want to share anything with us, uh, share any things that you've done, we'd love to see them and love to see your creations. Uh, this festival is all about, it's about us sharing what we are passionate about uh, on Dartmoor, but it's also it's also about you telling us what you think is special about Dartmoor as well. So we'd love to hear from you, uh, with whatever your thoughts on, on wildlife or history of Dartmoor as we're doing this. And so, there we go, we've got two bits. I just need one more bit on here, and then we are good for the next bit. Okay, so now I have I have my dagger with its decoration on both sides. So we're ready for the next bit there. Uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to try and metalize it. We're going to try and turn it into metal. Uh, and what have you got lying around that you could use? Well, you might have some gold wrapping paper, perhaps. Um, I don't have anything like that around, but I do have lots of uh, kitchen foil. So if we use kitchen foil to sort of to to wrap that up, uh, that'll work quite nicely. So I'll just get some of that. And just basically going to just lay my dagger on the kitchen foil, and because of all that glue that we've got on there from the um, on the um, double side sticky tape and we've got that so now if I just bring along the foil it's weird cutting foil it never seems to cut very smoothly but it's quite good if you can try to keep the foil as smooth as you as possible when you're doing this then that would be great. Obviously there are moments where it all goes a little bit crinkly but you can smooth those out a little bit. Just crimp it a bit at the end as well. Now you're going to end up with it all a little bit flappy along here so what I think we should do is use a little bit of tape again just to uh, tie that in. And just use a few little bits just to sort of get this going and I can use a nice long length to tidy it up. Thanks so Emma, good to see I've got some people watching, not just me on my own here. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, oh, I've, got the, I've done the bit where you fold the tape in on itself. Oh no, I've rescued it, that's good. So now it's starting to look the part, isn't it? There, and if I just then around the top of the dagger, we're going to end up covering this uh, with cardboard to make the handle so you don't need to be quite so tidy in the top section there. But I can just use a bit of tape to. Tie this all up. Here we go. Okay. 
bit more there. Okay, so now we have our, our Bronze Age blade here and the string that we put on, you can see if you rub your fingers along it, you can start to see it shows up a little bit in the pattern as well. So we've got our blade showing up. So that looks really cool. I'm really pleased with that. So we've got something that looks a bit like that, a bit like our, our proper dagger. Um, so we're going to put that to one side for a second and we need, uh, we need to make the handle. And so if you look at your template, uh, this kind of bone shaped one here is the, the handle that we're going to use. And I thought for this, uh, we've all got lots of delivery card, haven't we, sort of lying around. So let's use some of that uh, to uh, make the handle. It's quite thin, so it's normally quite easy to cut with a pair of scissors, which is always good. So I've got some here. And it's got sort of, it's got grooves, hasn't it, with corrugations. So if you use the corrugations as a long bit uh, for a long handle, that would be good. And somewhere in my pile of things, I've already cut out a, a template here to make this a bit quicker. So you don't have to watch me cutting things out twice. So I'm just going to draw around this. I'm going to need two of these, one for either side. This is where I have to be careful not to stick my tongue out as I'm concentrating. Kind of makes it easy <laughs> to do complicated things like drawing around stuff. So I'm really concentrating not to stick my tongue out there. Um, I'm, going cut out. I'm just going to cut it out roughly to start with because. It's easier, I find, to sort of cut it once it's out of the card. Across the lines. There we go. So we've got our first handle. We've got no idea what the handle really looked like because it's, it's made out of organic material. It could have been perhaps bone or it could have been... Uh, a piece of wood uh, carved, uh, but of course, uh, over three and a half thousand years, all organic material has kind of crumbled away and disappeared. And so we've we've lost the evidence for that. But it would seem sort of likely that it would probably kind of carved of some uh, <laughs> it was wood of some kind. Don't think it was a carved handle, Andy. The archaeologists will be going crazy with me for trying to uh, suggest that it was a card. So if you are just tuning in and you're wondering who I am, I'm Andy Bailey. I'm from Dartmoor National Park and I am here as part of the Dartmoor Connections Festival. Four weeks looking at what makes Dartmoor special, its history and its wildlife. And there are lots of things that are going to be taking place over the next four weeks. It's not just going to be me sat here cutting things out of cardboard. Uh, we've got lots of great stuff. Uh, on um, Thursday, I think it is, we have uh, our archaeologist Andy Crabb, who is going to be giving a talk about Bronze Age Dartmoor and filling in uh, all the gaps and putting things right that uh, I may have inadvertently uh, said wrong throughout the course of today. Uh, so there are, I think that is pretty much booked up now, but we will be trying to make that live uh, available online as well, either on Facebook or YouTube. So uh, watch out for our uh, posts online and we'll let you know where you can see that if you aren't lucky enough to be uh, at the live talk itself. Uh, we've also got Andy going, coming to talk to us uh, next Monday and he's going to be telling us about uh, life in medieval Dartmoor as well. Uh, we did, we've been doing an excavation, uh, a community excavation around Widdicombe for the last few years and it's been an incredible opportunity to work with lots of uh, interesting uh, local people uh, to explore a bit of Dartmoor's heritage. So we'll be looking at that as part of our uh, of our talks on Monday 
uh, and I think there are still some some places available on that. Uh, and then there'll be other lots of great things as well. We've got lots of crafty stuff uh, this week. This week uh, you're going to want to tune into a video a tutorial that we're putting online, uh, how to make your own Bronze Age uh, blouse or, or shirt, I suppose. Uh, so this is a, a simple tutorial that you can follow, and it's going to it's going to give you everything you need to sort of like make your own Bronze Age blouse. And this is based on some evidence that has come from some Danish archaeology uh, from sort of uh, things that have been investigated there. So you could have your own dagger, you could dress up like a Bronze Age person as well. So we're sort of nearly there, aren't we? We've got sort of like the start of the basis of this now. So I just need to put a bit of double sided sticky tape on the handle here just to get that sticking on. Alright, here we go. Oops. There we go, that's the first side done. And then we'll do the second side. So if this had been a real wooden handle, then they would have riveted this on, I think really sort of connected this on with the rivets. Obviously, we're not going quite that stage, but I suppose for authenticity, you could, I haven't got any, but you could use paper fasteners. You could sort of pierce some holes through here and here and sort of squeeze some paper fasteners through. That might look quite good doing that. And we've got sort of basis of our, our handle here now, but it doesn't feel very sort of, very sort of like structurally interesting there. So I think what we can do is we can sort of make a bit of a wrap of card around it. So all we need to do uh, for this bit, trying to find a bit of the box that is less damaged. Let's see. Ooh, I might use a different grade of cardboard actually. Look, I've got some card here, a little bit thicker. I'm going to, I'm going to cut these bits off here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, so I'm going to measure from the end of a handle to just there, just where it comes in. I'm going to cut a length of card. Nearly stuck its tongue out again. Concentrating, see. Right. So now we've got this nice piece of card here, which should wrap around our handle, start to form a nice shape. Brilliant. Okay, so let's stick that on. More double sided. So I never said how long I thought this was going to take. I thought this was probably going to take about. 30 minutes or so to do. I just see the time coming at half past 10, so I can see it's taken a little bit longer than I anticipated, but we're not far off now, so I reckon sort of in the next 10 minutes or so, we should be nearly done. Yeah. Let's see. Wrap that on, wrap it around. So we get to there, let's just do one more little bit of tape. Put that on the closing edge there. I suppose if you've got a hot glue gun, you could use a hot glue gun to stick some of this stuff together. But I always find that hot glue guns end up sort of burning my fingers. And I was thinking, how do we make this nice and easy for everyone to take part in? Okay, so we have our dagger with its handle on nice blade but obviously the most important bit is missing the the nice amber bit at the end the amber pommel and that is the bit that sort of everyone got really excited about with all this little gold bits in it so again I sort of i've got on here a nice oval shape for the pommel and i've cut out a piece of card in advance so i'm just going to draw around this and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to 
I'm going to make three of these because I want it to be nice and thick. Two. And I need another bit of card. Let's just do here. Three. Okay. Right. I'm all cutting out. Because we're cutting three out, we need to try and get these, cut these out as carefully as we can so they're all the same shape. That probably sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? But I mean, it's sort of it's easy when you're cutting to go inside the line a bit on one side and then outside a bit far on the other side. Don't really know all that then. Let's just use your crafting and stuff. So yeah, if you are making along with us, or you've just joined us, uh, then please let us know how you're getting on as you're making these. We'd love to see anything you make. Uh, you can share on Dartmoor Connections, hashtag Dartmoor Connections. Uh, it'd be great to see some of these things. Because I bet they would all look a little bit different. I've got three that makes a nice thickness there. And also, I've not got a template for this, but I was looking more closely at the amber pommel the other day, and there's a little bit that sort of, it, it kind of does that a little bit. And so I want to sort of make another little bit here. And I'm just going to basically draw around the end of our dagger. Yeah, so you can see what I'm doing. I've got this rather strange shape. And then I'm going to increase the shape by about five millimeters around it. And hopefully that is smaller. Yeah, it's still smaller than the big pommel bit. So now we have. that a little bit more right so we've got a stack of three things there now we just need a little bit of tape to stick all those together there it is If you've got thicker card, you could use thicker card, obviously, but then it makes it a bit harder to cut with the scissors, doesn't it? And if you're all trying to sort of work with with your family and you've all got rounded scissors to cut with, it's going to be tricky uh, to do that. So there we go. We've got those three bits there. And we just need one little bit on our... Uh, here. Cool. So I've stuck that on underneath there. Not quite got it sent together. No. Try to get it as central as I could. It's not too bad. And then the final little bit of tape. Yeah. And that is going to help us stick this on the end of our dagger, which is here. So now, just pop this on the end. Oh, looks pretty cool like that. That's stuck on. 
you're using PVA glue or something, you're going to have to wait for it to stick a little bit longer. Cool. And I thought, how can I make this more decorative? And probably, uh, I would imagine that sort of they would have perhaps wrapped a bit of uh, leather around it or a bit of fabric, textile of some kind, just to sort of make that grip a bit better. Uh, I've not got anything like that to hand, but I have got lots of string. So I'm going to use a little bit of string just to sort of wrap that over. Bit of good old double sided. And then we're nearly there. Okay. This is where we're going to wind it on. And we'll take it there. I've got my twine here. If I start, we'll start down at the bottom end. I'm going to actually start with the string going up the length slightly there. And then I'm going to wrap around and catch the, the glue. And the reason for doing that is it just traps the end in nicely. It just means I get a nicer covering. So you can see we're nearly there. We've just got the, the amber bits to sort of uh, look at in a second. But we'll be with that in just a moment. So coming towards the end of our first workshop. It's a bit sad, isn't it? Don't worry, there are lots of things coming up over the next few weeks. So the next thing we're going to be making uh, on Wednesday. We're going to be making Bronze Age Bling. That's right, Bronze Age Bling. So I mentioned earlier that there was a an excavation in 2011 up at Whitehorse Hill and it found some amazing things up there. Uh, they found some amazing things uh, buried with the remains of a, a person that must have been someone quite important we reckon because of the uh, materials that she was buried with. And we say she, we uh, think the sort of the person was a, was a young person and the, the goods suggest, uh, the burial goods suggest that actually it could have been uh, a young woman. So we call her our Bronze Age Princess. And she had this set, this necklace with her, this fine necklace. And we're going to try and make that ourselves. Now I'm conscious that most of you probably don't have amber beads lying around the house or anything like that. So we're going to have to try and improvise. So we're going to go and do some salt dough baking. We're going to need to use go into our kitchens on Wednesday, do some salt dough baking and try to make our bracelet. Look, there we go. So our dagger is looking pretty good there. It just needs the bit to look a bit amberish, doesn't it, really? And so what I need to do is I need to just get the paintbrush out and a bit of paint. So I've got some red and some yellow acrylic paint. Uh, I've got a little bit of spare card. I'll put that there. So I'm just going to put a little squirt of Red. Not too much, I don't need to waste it. And a bit of yellow just to make it a bit more orangey. Amber's, amber's like a resin uh, that, uh, that has kind of fossilized over millions, thousands of years. I'm not quite sure how long it's fossilized over. Uh, you can find insects and all kinds of things preserved within it. Uh, so it's kind of it's a bit translucent kind of colour. Uh, so it must have been rather special looking. And I think what was quite good was that, it, is that I think you could heat it up and it would soften slightly to make it easier to work with. And, um, and I think they were able to sort of insert these gold pins into it because, of the, uh, because it would soften, because it's this soft material. Just 
underneath. Not to get any on my string wrapping. Or the table. There we go. So we have our dagger with a amber pommel with a nice tightly wound handle, decorative blade. And I suppose if you wanted to make the blade a little bit more bronze looking, you could get a bit of yellow paint and paint that as well. So I keep looking down at the screen to see that I'm holding things right. I should be looking up there at you. Uh, so um, I hope you've enjoyed this workshop. We've made a Bronze Age dagger. Uh, go and see the real thing when you can, when the visitor centres reopen. Uh, and. Um, and join us on Wednesday uh, for our next workshop to make our jewellery. Our jewellery is going to look like this. Let's try not to shake it too much. So you can see it's got shale beads, it's got amber beads, and it's got a tin bead there as well. So an amazing jewellery there, rendered out of dough craft. Uh, tune in for all the other things uh, that you can do. So you can go to our website dartmoor.gov.uk slash Dartmoor Connections. You can sign up to the newsletter there and you'll be able to uh, keep on top of everything that's going on over the next four weeks. Uh, what else can you do? You can send um, us anything that you've been up to via the hashtag Dartmoor Connections. Uh, so have a great time, whatever you're doing, exploring Dartmoor. And remember that you could be walking through time, through Bronze Age and medieval life or just seeing amazing wildlife while you're out there. And we'll join you uh, next time on Wednesday, as I say, for the jewellery making. Until then, happy crafting!